FLM, wide open thinking, world-class work, and far-reaching results. Now with locations in Minneapolis, Columbus, Indianapolis, and Washington, D.C. A strategic marketing and communications company dedicated to serving clients who specialize in the business of agriculture and the life of rural communities. Congressman Ryan Zinke from the state of Montana, thank you for joining us. Great to be here. Uh, just for starters, can you tell us a little bit about if we were to take a drive through, uh, through your home, sta home state, what kinds of agriculture might we come across? Well, first of all, the size of Montana. Uh, Montana is about the same size from Washington, D.C. to Chicago, plus two miles. So that's how large Montana is. And you can imagine a state that size, the diversity of, of, of agriculture. You know, on the eastern side, uh, large wheat farms uh, around Glasgow. The average size of a wheat farm is about 20,000 acres. And as you move west, uh, peas, barley, uh, you know, the, the ranches and, and farms still are large. Uh, and then as you get towards uh, the western side, um, then it's, you know, more crops are a little more labor intensive, a lot of hay, you start getting up in the mountains. But agriculture still is Montana's number one business. Now, you mentioned that Montana or that agriculture is Montana's number one business, obviously a very important industry in the state, and yet you, you aren't able to serve on the Agriculture Committee. And kind of the symptom of being an at-large representative, being the only congressman from your state, there's a lot of industries that are very important to Montana, but you can't serve on all of those committees. So with that in mind, how do you balance serving those industries, but maybe not being able to sit on the committees that those industries are? Well, as you, as you point out, you know, Montana, we have one representative, uh, and I represent everyone. Uh, and, and, but egg is important, and I'm, I wasn't brought, brought up on a farm, and I'm not a rancher, but I have to know who is. And I rely a lot on getting out and talking to the wheat growers, talking to stock growers, talking to to farmers and ranchers, and primarily our, our family-run businesses. And I spend a lot of time you know, talking to them, looking at the challenges, and I rely on, on Montanans to tell me what's important. You know, I remember uh, when I was in the campaign and right after I, I was elected, you know, Senator Conrad Burns, uh, he came up and he said, you know, one bit of advice for you is always support ag. And he was right. And so uh, coming up, we're going to invite the, the chair of the House Ag uh, Committee out in Montana. I maintain a close relationship uh, with all the associations. And I get out there and, and talk to real ranchers and real farmers. And there's a lot of challenges uh, in Montana. The infrastructure, uh, the water is one of them. But I also sit on natural resources. Uh, and, and looking at the EPA and what I think is an overreach. Uh, and, and water is critical to Montana. Water is the U.S. Act uh, is, is certainly at the top of that list. Now, I, I did ask you about the committees that you don't serve on, and now let's touch on the committees that you do serve on. You mentioned Natural Resources, also a member of the Armed Services uh, Committee in the House. What are some things that you would like to accomplish during your time on those two committees? Well, on the natural resources, uh, one of the first goals was looking at the forest fire problem. Uh, and status quo is not working. And I was sent to Washington to fix the problem and not become a part of the problem. And our forests are burning down. And the, the bill was, is supported by the former chief of the U.S. Forest Service, uh, Chief Bosworth. He lives in Missoula. He came out to testify. And in his words, we don't have a fire problem. We have a land management problem. And the Forest Service is 71 million acres behind in removing dead, dying trees and, and treating our forests. Our forests are our legacy in Montana, and public lands is enormously important uh, in Montana. It's utilized for recreation and timber and hunting and fishing. And Montana has a special relationship with our public lands. And to watch every year the amount of fires and devastation and hot fires uh, occurring, I think is just unacceptable. You know, we want to we return our forests to resilient, healthy forests. We need more scientists and less lawyers uh, in the woods. And this is, this is not a Republican or Democrat issue. Uh, this is an American issue. And I'm confident that if we work together, uh, we'll move forward 
and it will restore health to our forests. And what about armed services? I know we're looking at potentially a very turbulent time in, in our country going forward. How can you make sure on the Armed Services Committee, how can you make sure that our armed forces are, are prepared for, for what could be a, a kind of a rough couple of years here? Well, what I found in Congress is that the number of veterans uh, is few. Um, my background, I was a SEAL commander for 23 years. I was a deputy and acting commander of Special Forces in Iraq. And what I care about is making sure that when we go forward, that we make sure our men and women have the right equipment, the right training, and the right rules of engagement to win decisively on the field of battle. You know, given that there's you know, fiscal challenges, you know, how can we do it better? How can we look at emerging threats and make sure we're capable of winning? Uh, a lot of the challenges are the bureaucracy side, the Department of DOD has grown. We have 739,000 DOD employees. Now, many of them are absolutely required and are hardworking, but the tooth to tail ratio, I think, has to be looked at. And I'm concerned about the size of our active duty uh, forces uh, becoming smaller, the number of our ships becoming smaller, and our ability to win decisively in the field of battle, I think, is at risk uh, unless we shore up and focus on the pointy edge of the spear, which is equipment and, and men and women that are going to fight our next wars. Now, you are one of 82 veterans serving in the House. I believe there's 21 in the Senate. So out of the 535, that's less than 20% of Congress is veterans. Do you think that's an inadequate amount? No, I, I think uh, having yeah, a veteran voice, uh, you know, is, is, is helpful in a lot of ways. Uh, one is, is that looking at, at war, and I'm the last person that would ever advocate going to war because I've seen it, I understand the consequences of war, and I've seen the consequences on, on our families. And we've been in sustained combat operations the longest period in our nation's history and by more than twice. Uh, so I, I understand that. And I, think, I think having a, a background uh, in Special Forces and during this period is enormously helpful. But I do think Congress as a whole uh, is a better body uh, when you have experience, practical experience. You know, and the same thing for other disciplines. You know, with the, with the medical field, if you have a background in, in medicine, I think it's helpful uh, to be in a committee because you understand uh, you know, the, the, the details and you have a practical application and, and a, a vocation in that, in that field. And you're making the decisions on law that will have a future effect. Now, something that surprised me when I was doing some research on you is that you were the first Navy SEAL to ever be elected to, to Congress. So from what I've heard from, from the SEAL community, it's a fraternity and it's a brotherhood like, unlike any other. So what does it mean to you to be able to be the first from that brotherhood to, to serve in Congress? Well, it's a great honor. And Bob Carey uh, was, was a SEAL team a member, SEAL team one, and a Medal of Honor winner that served in the Senate. Mm. Uh, I'm the first member in the House of Representatives. Okay. And it's an enormous honor, uh, but it's also a responsibility uh, because as a, as a naval officer, uh, my background with the Navy and Special Forces, I think I, I bring to the table an interesting perspective, uh, but also it's, it's a responsibility to make sure that I'm informed uh, because you know, people will look at me and, and do oftentimes as a subject matter expert. And I got to make sure I stay current and get out there and, and, and talk to the chiefs and the senior enlisted and, and the officers to make sure that before I speak, I speak with authority. Now, you also spent some time in the Montana State Senate. You've got uh, experience in a wide variety of issues, but when you were thinking about what it was that made you want to want run for Congress, what was that singular issue that really drove you to make the run for Washington? You know, it's fixable. Uh, as much as we hear in media, you know, how bad everything is. Uh, the balance sheet of America is strong. Uh, we have an energy component that I'm a former geologist, uh, and I was told that we were going to run out of crude oil, you know, reserves, you know, years ago. Uh, that's not true with horizontal drilling and innovation. And as it turns out, the United States has an energy picture in a portfolio that's larger than any nation on Earth. And we have the strongest military uh, still today. Uh, by far, and our people work hard. So I look at the balance sheet of, of America and say, you know, we can fix this. 
uh, it's within our power to do so. We have to pay attention and we have to do what America does best is innovate and think out of the box and remove a government that has become too large, uh, corrupt in, in some cases, and it's, and it's challenging our ability to innovate. You know, the one size doesn't fit all, and certainly what makes sense in New York City uh, likely does not make sense in Billings or Winnet, Montana. And we have to be careful to preserve the uh, ideas and foundations of this country, which is the Constitution and individual freedoms. Now you say that there's a lot of problems that are fixable. What, what's the one issue that you're most looking forward to fixing? Well, certainly in my home state is returning to a healthy forest uh, is important and, and pushing back on the idea that Washington knows best. Uh, Washington simply doesn't have the answers. And to ask, you know, a Washington bureaucrat, and, you know, I respect, you know, the hard work of, of the different departments, but when they don't know Montana, uh, and I, I always say, you know, the difference is that if you don't know the difference between Butte and Bozeman and Winnet or, or Haver, maybe you're not in a position to make the de decisions that affect Butte, Bozeman, and Haver to the extent that we're seeing. Uh, water is the U.S. Act. Uh, you know, I think Montana uh, handles our water, uh, you know, very, very well. And I'm, I'm a conservationist, you know, I look at it from a Boy Scout perspective of make sure when you, when you come in you leave in the same condition or better. And I want to preserve the legacy of Montana public lands for my children too. Um, but this one size fits all, what makes sense sometimes in, you know, in New Jersey or, or on the East Coast uh, does not make sense when you look at, at Montana and we have to be careful. And, and push back to make sure the states, you know, have more say. Congressman Ryan Zinke from the state of Montana, thank you for joining us. My pleasure.